last week. Were you here last week? You were yeah, here last week, yeah. yes. And um, not sure if any of you Zoomers were here last week, but can you remember some of the things that we talked about or that we covered? We were out and we're out there. Yeah, that's it. Espelier. So we did some uh, espalier. Well, we we created an espalier fruit tree. So last week was all about using vertical space, uh, and one of the things we did was espalier, which is where you grow a fruit tree, which normally uh, grows in three dimensions, in uh, a flat against the wall. So you can have a fruit tree. And as long as you've got a slightly warm um, spot with some sun, then you can you can grow still produce fruit, but with um, uh, without using lots of horizontal space. So if you've got a fence or a wall or a balcony with a wall, then espalier. And it's really just a case of pruning and tying. Um, so check it out, E S P A L I E R. If you Google it, there's lots and lots of information and lots of um, lots of different ways that you can do it. That was one thing we did. We also looked at vertical gardens. So we looked at some of the different systems that you could use. Um, we stuck a terracotta pot onto a wall. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that you can, you can use the large vertical space by literally having soil and plants kind of stacked up and growing on the wall. Uh, and another thing we just quickly went over is a thing called uh, uh, aquaponics, which is where you have a fish pond, you have fish in it, you pump the water through a garden, uh, which has gravel in it, which filters the water for the fish. So it's like a, a big filter system and the fish waste feeds the plants and the plants filter the water into the fish. So it's a closed mm -hmm. loop, it's a little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly, a little bit to it to get it right. But if you can get it right, uh, it can be a really productive, small space system. So aquaponics might be something that you want to check out if, you're, um, if you feel that way inclined. And the benefit is you get lots of food, you get can eat, you can grow fish that you can eat. And um, yeah, it's really water efficient. So the water's in a closed loop. And uh, yeah, so it can be really, really productive in a small space with aquaponics. I think that was all we covered last week. Yeah, those three things. Oh, and climbers, using climbers up a wall. Okay. So let's get on to, uh, we'll start with sprouts today. Um, and we might do the screen share now, Natalia. So, so growing sprouts is where you, you take a bunch of seeds and you grow them in a moist environment in a jar, they sprout and you eat them. And nothing could be simpler. There, uh, there's a mob called, there we are, Green Harvest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's what I think it's about. Uh, there's, look, Green Harvest is one place where you can get this 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 information and the, these materials. Um, there's lots of there's probably lots of others as well, but this is one that I you know, that we it's good to show you. So um, they have a section on their website. You can get you can buy seeds from them. Lots of organic um, you know garden management kind of products and things. Seeds, books, chicken supplies. And one thing they do is uh, seed sprouts and microgreens. I've got a whole section on that. So um, there's really good information. So if you get stuck or if you're interested, get some good information and even some resources as well. Um, probably your local nursery, local hardware store could, could help you out as well. And I'm sure there are lots of other websites and places you could go to. But if we click through Natalia, maybe to the sprouts and microgreens section, I just wanted to take you to this the, this resort resource, um, which is download. You can see download for free a green harvest sprouting wheatgrass and microgreen guide. Really useful little little piece of kit, and that's what we'll um. I'm going to run you through some of the information in there and show you how you can do sprouts. <laughs> right, I'm not sure where we're at now, but um, so sprouts, is anyone growing sprouts? Is it growing sprouts? Yeah, yeah. So everyone here probably knows 
more than that list than I do, but we'll, uh -huh. we'll work through it together. Yeah, so we can come back to that. Um, yeah, so do you, did you find it hard, easy? Do you easy. do it a lot? Do you, easy? Yeah? How about you? Easier for myself, and I did some skiing as well. No, I wasn't a good skiing. Yeah. A good weight in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you started munching on the sprout. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sure there's someone who might want to retain my phone number every time to do it. I'm sure it's a cut system and you get through all the things. So I was surprised at the bottom of my eye. Yeah, they just start to grow, yeah? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, huh? cool. It's going to pop it. You sent me on and it's going to be up to the new thing. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So when you when you're growing sprouts, really it is you're just putting a seed in a moist environment, waiting till it starts to grow, and then eating it. So it, you know a lot of uh, you can have food in a few days, you know, three or four or five days. You're eating you're eating fresh, crunchy, leafy greens. Uh, well, not leafy greens, sprouts, I guess. Uh, you can grow a lot of seeds from sprouts. Um, I'll just list a few out of the book they've got here. So alfalfa, amaranth, barley, grass, basil, uh, beetroot, broccoli, buckwheat, chickpea, cress, dill, fenugreek, kale, lentils, linseed, flaxseed, mung beans, mustard, oak grass, onions, quinoa, radish and daikon, red cabbage, rocket, sunflower, wheatgrass, just to name a few. So you probably pretty much grow anything from uh, as a sprout, but they're some of the ones that, that work quite well and quite successfully. So I'm going to show you how to, we're going to do some alfalfa sprouts today. So one of the more common ones, they're pretty easy to grow. They're, a, um, they're one that you grow around this time of year. So when it's a little bit warmer, hey Karen, how's it going? Hey Julian, welcome back. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll just run you through the process and you can call out if you've done it this way, another way, if there's any tips and tricks and we'll just work through it. So most, pretty much all of your seed that you'll be sprouting, um, you need to soak them for a period of time before you sort of get them into the sprouting kind of mechanism. Uh, and the sprout, the soaking time is different for different seeds. So if you soak them for too long, they can go a bit stinky, they can go festy. If you don't soak them long enough, you might not get a, a really good sprouting kind of um, outcome. Great thing about this little book is there's a table in the middle and it has the time that you they recommend you sort of soak your seeds for. So alfalfa, we should soak them for three to six hours before we move them into their sprouting jar. So we don't have three to six hours. So we won't do that, but imagine you had done that already. Um, and in a jar, so what you, where should we go? So you can use any old jar. Uh, this is a special jar because it's got a special lid. So it allows us to, to use it as a sprouting jar. I have another jar in my green bag over there that in the, on the, in the bench. Uh, here are, yes, and there's a, that'll probably, yeah. Thank you, no. <laughs> Need my music on. Thank you. Um, so this is one that you can buy as a special sprouting jar, and it, the benefit is it comes with a special lid, which is really really good. Or you can just find a jar in your pantry and get a bit of this, some sort of cloth. Chuck. Yeah, that kind of breathes. So you could use um. Fly screen. Yeah, gauze, fly screen. Um, Socks, maybe, maybe if they're not too thick. <laughs> Thin socks, yeah, stockings. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Some sort of material that, that will breathe, okay, that holds the seeds in, but it breathes. Uh, and a rubber band. So there's your sprouting kit. Cost me probably two cents or something. So that's one option, and this is the other. So you, um, you take your seeds. Open them up. And so we've got a little packet. Alfalfa. So it's telling me in our in our table, really useful resource. Uh, you would use a heaped teaspoon will yield one cup of sprouts. So just a teaspoon, a big piled up teaspoon, you get a cup full of sprouts. 
Um, so I reckon we wouldn't use much more than that in a, in a jar this size. Uh, if you have too many seeds, if you, put, if you put twice as much as that, when they start to grow, they'll kind of be really squished into this, this container and that's when you can have problems if there's not enough kind of air flow. So we'll just use a teaspoonful in our jar. So alfalfa, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, sometimes I've been known to be wrong, but uh, this alfalfa is lucerne seeds. Oh really? Yes, we have a yes. So that'll take that. Take that. Yeah, so lucerne. <laughs> so you can actually grow this in your garden uh, as a plant that you can grow and use it for mulch, for chopping and dropping. It's a really useful plant. It's also delicious as a sprout. So we'll measure out precisely a heap teaspoon. A seeds, yeah. A seed sprout. So there we go, there's there's about a, a teaspoon, a heaped teaspoon, give or take. Pop it in our jar. Actually, I'm going to use this one. No, I'm not going to use this one. There they are. So that's all you need, just a little little sprinkling in the bottom. And then we would put some warm water, not hot water, but just warm water and let it sit for about three to six hours. Then, we'll do that for some warm water. Let that sit. Um, so you just have the cloth, so the cloth, cloth helps keep the moisture in, but it helps the air go in. So it's three to six hours later, we can empty, empty the water out. Now part of one of the important processes with your sprouts is rinsing. Because the water is just sitting there, it can go, it can go anaerobic and smelly. So what we would do now is get some fresh water out and put this under the tap and give it a bit of a rinse. Are you going to take the cloth off? You could take the cloth off. <laughs> probably be easier. And then just give it a bit of a swizzle and empty it out. Oh, look at that. It's not coming through. <laughs> Cloth. Yeah, we'll let that sit somewhere so that it actually comes out. <laughs> now, what we're we waiting for, right? <laughs> yeah. do we need, do we need to do any sanitizers? <laughs> well, you look probably want to, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so it's a good question. Uh, that Julian had. I don't know if you guys on Zoom heard that, but do we need to do any sanitizing before, yes. during, after? Yeah, probably wash your hands and the and the container. You, you, why, why would you sanitize, Julian? Well, this, this is a question. Question on, on on yeah on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Do you have the answer, or do you are you curious on Zoom? I could wash it out. I never. Yeah. I guess it's food that you're leaving out at room temperature for days, so you want to be really clean to begin with. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the things that can go wrong mm. is yeah. you do get bacteria or fungal or spores mm. or mold yes. in there, and because yeah. it's the perfect environment for, for mold and things to grow, yeah, yeah if you, you'd, you'd put it either through your dishwasher or you could even put it in the oven and throw it at 100 degrees and kind of sterilize it or boil it or whatever. Um, you can't just lick out the peanut butter jar and stuff. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> you might, might not get that. Yeah, so, so a clean, clean jar, yeah. clean cloth. And then it's just a case of you put it, you want it to have light, but you don't want to put your sprouts in the sun. Okay, so this is one way to do it. I'm going to empty this out in a second. There was a question as well. Yep. Um, I don't know if you've come into that, but that the question is, how would you avoid attracting fruit flies? 
Do you get fruit flies? No, but you won't get, well, not, not fruit fly as such. They probably won't be interested, do you? Has anyone experienced that? Yeah, they that? I don't know. They, they don't get smell, but I don't think they attract them in a covered way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a major problem for... Diane, are you finding that you are getting fruit flies? Feel free to unmute and tell us. Yeah, I actually, so since I've moved here, I there are fr fruit flies whether we leave food out or not. And I just wondered, I just assumed that if they're attracted to anything and everything, that I have a sprout thing and I wanted to try it, but I just don't want to end up just wasting end it. Up wasting it. End up, up covered, in covered in fruit flies. Yeah, so are you talking about those little flies that kind of hover around your fruit bowl and they're in your compost and the worm farm? Yeah, yeah, I was top. I was top on. No, they're actually vinegar flies or fungus fungus gnats, and they and they hang around your um yeah they hang around fruit. They're not technically fruit fly, but they're flies that hang around fruit, I guess. But yeah, I think actually um, actually they like any they food. like any food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll hang around. Um, look, I don't know. I don't know if it's would be a problem. I don't think it would be a major problem because there's really nothing in here that would scream out for them to come and eat Sweet us. Food. Yeah, it's not really fruity. Um, and like Judy said, why don't, if, as long as it's clean and you're rinsing it, it's not going. It shouldn't be emitting any anything that's that appealing. And okay. you've got okay. these, thanks. You've I'll got give it a try. Give it a try. Yeah, you got this cover, so they can't get in anyway. So yeah, I, I think give it a try. See how you go. But I'll be interested to hear like your feedback. Is. You find out otherwise. So you want to thank you. So, um, so we've soaked them, we've rinsed them, and we've emptied most of the water out. The great thing about this pot, this container, is that it sits on an angle like that. So when you do your rinsing, you just sit it there. You put a little dish or something on it if you needed to. So it's kind of lets the water out but it lets air in there. So it's at that balance again. It's always a balance of water and air. So you do that. It's recommended you rinse them under fresh water about three times a day if you can. So a little swish all around and empty it. Swizzle, empty it. You don't want mold growing in here. Twice a day, you know, three times is best. And then within three to five days, well, very quickly, almost a day, you'll see the, the seed will start to start to grow. And then three to five days, you've got it ready to eat. Mm -hmm. mm. That's it. Are they the same seeds <laughs> with plants in your garden? Uh, you would probably not use, go out and buy a packet. You wouldn't use just an off the shelf packet of seeds that you are suitable for garden planting as sprouts. Some, partly because there's, they're probably too expensive and you don't get that many. But a lot of, or well, some of your seeds can be treated with like fungicides and all sorts of not great things. So you, you, you either buy, you can sprout, you know, buy seeds that are for sprouting. So you know that there's nothing in them that's gonna hurt you. Or you can sprout, you can go to your health food shop and buy a packet of, what are these? Organic white kidney beans? They'd be fine for sprouting. So you can buy, you know, bulk packets of things like mung beans and black beans. Can you eat them raw? Yeah, yeah. So you're just eating the raw um, shoots of the of the plant. But they they convert to they become digestible, don't they, when when they sprout? Yeah, and I think something chemically happens and the nutrients are more available and and they're just probably nicer to eat. Oh. Is this the, the same uh, the same thing with beans? Yeah, yep. So you can use beans, um, sunflowers. There's a whole list. A whole, I mean, there's heap, heaps of different sprouts that you can do. What about like when they've already, you know, when you buy mung beans and they convert that like, pretty much to all the stuff that's part of the um, mung beans and stuff? So it's like three. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then they've already done their thing. Yeah. You put some of the leftovers. Like if you buy them already sprouted. Yeah, and then it can go a lot more for it than they you know, you know, freshly plucked them and they've already done their thing, so they've already got their food for you. 
Yeah, no, I think once it's shot or sprouted, that doesn't matter. No, they're no, quite no, soft. They're soft, they're yeah. soft and crunchy and delicious. Yeah, yeah. 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 My mum did it. Yeah. Can I mention uh, uh, same thing but different way of doing this? But yeah. I reckon I reckon you do. Have you seen the worm farm one? I I've seen a picture of it. Yeah, I haven't actually. Sorry, Lou. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe go straight on. So this one, like a worm farm, it's got multiple layers, um, and each layer's got a little drain in it. And so what you do is you put your this, and it's got a little. I actually stick this on the corner of my sink, so I could just pour water in the top, and it just drains straight into the sink. There's like no effort. When these just start to sprout, you can stick another one on top, which has a little drain, and start that. And then when that just starts to sprout, you put a third layer on top. So it's a continuous batch system. So by the time, and you know, like when you're doing all this, you have to muck around a bit. I just, I just turn the tap on directly as I just drain straight into the sink. And then when these are fully sprouted like that, you then take it out and eat it and put it on top. And so you've got just continuous flow of our half a spring. So, so like what are the traces? That's just plastic in there, don't you? Yeah, like that. Yeah, and you can also get them from large hardware stores. Um, for very actually, because I'm wearing sticky gloves. Yeah, it's a bit, bit odd. Um, so yeah, I ended up buying one kilo packs of alfalfa. Yeah, because you just. How big are the traces? Okay. Yeah. You buy four and they're made for dry. Vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but I know they're good for me. <laughs> they're made purely for sprouting. You'll find them in the seed section of the hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll have to move back in front of the camera now. <laughs> so there is a welcome back, Julian. Yeah. Oh, and, thank and, you. and what's the best temperature? I just, I don't know. Room temperature. Yeah, so in the um, in the little booklet, there's a section. Really, it says the best temperature range for growing. So alfalfa is 16 to 25 degrees C, whereas something like broccoli is 10 to 25. Uh, most of them seem to be around about 20. So yeah, room temperature is probably should be about right, unless you live in a fridge. I'm sorry, one, one last thing. With the tracing, because it's self-draining, you don't have to soak them. Yeah, okay. Because so it's so it just starts. It's, yeah. Yeah, so perfect. Like really, Flex. it's 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 the feet up on the couch. Yeah, I think you made them. Yeah, this is that water. You put them in, yeah. add water. That's it. You just do oh, that. you still add water. Yeah, yeah. but it's self draining. Mm. Sounds perfect. Sounds like a good system. The less steps, the better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, what should we do with these? I'll take them home. This one, do you want to take them home? You can try. No. No? Okay. <laughs> no, no, they're not done. So it'll take three or five days. I'll bring these back next week. I'll bring them back next week. We'll see how we go. We'll share them for our picnic. Oh, no, we won't because of it. <laughs> we can't do that anymore, can we? Yes, I'll eat them. All right. Um, so that's sprouting. Any questions? Any more questions? Um, so I thought I heard something that some seeds are um, not good for you, like whether it was like there's alfalfa or there's like the beans or some, I don't know. But they just keep that. Like yeah. Some poison. Mm. Maybe okay. some poison in the seed. Or, I don't know. Maybe it's from this. Like, have you, have you heard anything about that? Like it eats everything. I think some people have a digestive issue. So like, like raw beef. Well, when they sprout, they change. Can you spread lentils? Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me yeah. check. Probably. Let me check the guys. Lentils, yes. Oh, I've never seen them. Two to four days, you need them to sprout. Wow. So the pigeon pee out there. Yeah, I wonder. So you got a nut. Yeah, I wonder. That's the lentils. You know, we, we can pick those. Oh, my God. So, did you 
Could be, yeah. I'm sure other places do as well, I should say. Okay, well, there you go, sprouting. Uh, fantastic, virtually no space. I mean, it sits yeah. that much room on your sink and you're eating delicious, fresh, crunchy vegetables every day. Yeah, still <laughs> <laughs> and then, How long can you uh, refresh now? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, uh, do you put yours in the fridge or you just eat them as they come out of the... Yeah, because I am a bit slow sometimes, so I just put them in the container in the fridge if I don't yeah. eat all of them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, it's just food. Don't eat all three days. Five days, maybe. It's vegetable. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a there's some different methods for storing them and treating them to put them in the fridge. So some of them, they still have the little outer coating of the seed mm. on on the sprout. Mm. So you can kind of put them in a, a container of water and mush them around a bit in the, the husks come off yeah and separate them out I don't, you know, if you don't like eating them and then um, put them in a container apparently the container as well that you put in the fridge should be able to breathe so if you put them in a solid like a closed plastic container that's they can go moldy so it's basically the same ideas but in the fridge but, and you know if if you wanted to rinse them when they're in the fridge every couple of days it probably would keep them fresh as well so you can prolong their life Mm. Can you uh, sprout rice? Can you sprout rice? Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Has anyone tried no, it? I, I tried quinoa, but it was also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you, you can, can sprout any seed. Yeah. It's just whether or not you like it. Eat it or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corn seeds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so quinoa, yeah. bit of a bit of a trick. Yeah. Well, fig, even broccoli. Yeah, broccoli. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there you go. So try different things. I think. Um, yeah, pumpkin sprout probably. I know sunflower is is, is surprising. Yeah, yeah, that's really delicious. Well, sunflowers for sure I've done, and they're really nutty. All right, so that's one way you can do it. And another way, this is another way that you can grow um, lots of lots of little leafy greens that you can get a, get a hold of is, um, well, we call them microgreens. I don't know if you've ever been to the fruit shop and you go into the, the section where the salads are and there's a box of salad and you can buy sort of chopped up little little leaves of salad for an exorbitant amount of money. Really easy, really easy to do at home. Um, but it's a slightly different technique. So similar, but different. So microgreens are when you grow, you grow a whole bunch of, same idea, a bunch of seeds and you let them grow. But in this case, instead of growing them inside in a light, but not sunny position, you'd put them in somewhere that gets sun and you're growing baby plants and harvesting them. And it's actually, you grow them in soil. Yeah, so you can pretty much, one of my favorite things to do in a garden, in a container garden, a raised bed or a pot or whatever, is to grow microgreens. So you can do it in, in a garden situation, you can do it in a vertical garden, you can do it in a tray like this, which is a plant tray where, that we got from the nursery. I've put, um, put some fabric over the holes in the bottom so all that soil doesn't come out. Uh, you can grow them in these little seed propagating trays. I've done it where I've just put put the mix potting mix straight into here without even having drain holes. I had to manage the watering, but you could easily knock some drain holes in there and you got a little, little greenhouse going on. So any container really that holds soil uh, you can use. So I'm going to use We're going to put this in our new propagation area up the top, which is very exciting. Uh, and it's going to rain all week, so next week we're going to come back and do a whole bunch of, bunch of things. So, 
We haven't talked about potting mix in this series yet, so we've always made our own. So you can make your own potting mix for, for microgreens, um, which, can anyone remember the recipe? We did this four, one so. before, one stem, <laughs> yeah. one cereal yeah. Oh. Yeah. So one part coconut fiber, yeah. which holds moisture, one part yeah. So this is the coconut fiber before it's wet. So you buy it in a big solid clump and then you put it in, in water. I'm going to make a big mess here. And that soaks up a lot of water. So this is this holds moisture. So that's one part coconut, one part sand, or some sort of uh, what are the other ones? Perlite. Perlite or vermiculite. And these add air to the mix and help it drain. And if you're going to grow plants in it, so if it's in a pot or a, um, as opposed to just growing seeds. You want to have some nutrients in there. So a nice handful, one part, one part, and almost one part of um, comp really good compost, homemade compost or uh, worm stuff in, in the mix. And that adds nutrients, but it also adds the microorganisms that we love so much. And that will get your, your plants coming. So that's one option. It's a really good option. The other option, if you can, is the potty mix that you buy. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of things I look for uh, from potting mix. If you do, if you do go want to buy a potting mix, um, if you're growing food, and because we're talking about permaculture and organic growing, um, choose an organic potting mix. Beware, you'll go to the shops, mm -hmm. and there'll be every second bag will say organic. Yeah. Right? It's not necessarily organic because anyone can call anything organic, right? But there's a uh, you want to look for this label or a label, which is a certification. Uh, the same place everyone buys everything these days. <laughs> yeah, so this. Yeah. But wherever you buy it, um, some sort of. I can't even remember. This is, it's been in the shed for a long time. Yeah, the, the nursery or whatever. Um, so certified organic. So that tells you that what's in here is is really organic. The other thing to look, the other thing to look for in your potting mix is this this label. So this is your Australian standard tick of approval, if you like. So you can get um, bags of potting mix that don't have anything that resembles anything like this. <laughs> Don't buy it. Do not, do not buy it. You're wasting your money. Your plants won't grow properly. You can get a black box. So the same thing, but a, a black, it's black. That's kind of, yeah, it's all right. Or you get a red box, which is premium. Go for the red box. You're not generally not more expensive. But what that tells you is that this potting mix uh, is good quality. It has a, a, a balanced pH, which is the acidity. It has, um, it has food in there for... So there's nutrients in there for up to three months of plant growth, and it has water holding capacity. So this is the best potting mix. So if you find the red ticker box and the certified logo, then you're, you're, that's, you're off to a flyer. Unless you make your own, which is just as good. So potting mix, whenever you open a bag of potting mix and whenever you're using potting mix, it can have Legion Edge disease in it, which kills you. Potentially. Right, so um, <laughs> so wear a mask. What for this thing? Uh, it's called Legionnaire's disease. It's a bacteria, and if you inhale it into your lungs, you can get um, you can get infected and can affect. Oh, good. I couldn't find those before. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. But is it an every potty mix? Right. No, it's not, look, it's 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 not necessarily in here, but sometimes it is. It's one of those it can happen, but it, it probably won't happen. Okay. It can happen, and sometimes if you're unlucky enough when they're bagging the potting mix, if it if that bacteria happens to be in there, 
and the conditions in here are just happen to be ideal for that bacteria to grow. You open the bag and go suck it back, then it's in the lungs. So you don't want to do that. So it's probably not in here, but it has been. It has been in the past. Um, so just be careful. There's all sorts of information on the back. So I guess this is another benefit of not buying bags or putting them, just making your own. Um, what's another benefit of not not buying a bag? Uh, you got the waste. You got the, the transport. Yeah, so I think we can stop plastics get recycled. Anyway, so you get the potty mix. You put your mask on and your gloves, and you fill your container. Well, you don't even need a full. You need about three or four centimeters of potty mix. At least just for depth. And we spread that out. Look at this, that's beautiful potty mix. It's color, really nice. It's really dark. Yeah. Of course, if you're doing this in a garden, you could just put your you could put your potty mix straight on top of the soil, or you could just put the put your seeds straight into the soil. Now what I'm going to do with this is what this will do. Well, what will this do? Moistens the soil. Yeah, it also, and it also um, it make it not dusty. So I think that's reasonable. Thank you. All right. Uh, so. Yep. So we've uh, got our tray. It drains. We've got our potty mix. Then we just decide what we want to grow. One of the, my favorite things to do is this salad mix. So um, you can grow microgreens kind of, again, lots and lots of different things. And the idea is that you plant them on mass, like quite, you know, a lot closer together than you would if you were growing them out into a big plant and you eat them before they get too big. Um, so these are like a salad mix of different, different kind of salad greens. Just quickly go through the other things that they say you can grow as microgreens. Sprouts. Uh, amaranth, basil, beef, what are these things? Buckwheat, cress, dill, kale, linseed, mustard, pea shoots, radish, red cabbage, rocket, sunflowers. There you go. Sorrel. Um, you can buy these mixed microgreens. And this one is flavors of Eastern Europe. Uh, which has got, okay, got okay. kale, Something. let's make it up, kale, <laughs> no, no, kale, cabbage, and peas. Cool. Kale, cabbage, and peas, you'll be in Eastern Europe, is that right? <laughs> I yeah. don't think so. Don't think so. <laughs> you know. Let's go to France instead. So flavors of France, we, ha we have uh, sorrel, chervil, and sunflower. So we'll do, but we'll, we'll just go for a salad mix. So, so this is a mixture of like, you know, different lettuces and probably some silver beet in there and some kale and all sorts of different mixed, um, mixed salad leafy green type things. So again, you could soak this for a little while just to get it help with the germination process. I don't know if you guys can see this bit. You don't have to soak it. Not necessarily, no. Beetroot, they say, it grows better if you do soak it. But, so I'm just going to get these seeds and scatter them around on the surface. Yeah, beetroot's quite a big seed. Yeah. So you can put even more than that. Maybe we'll put some more. So you, you just scatter them around. I'm trying to put them all in. Let's see that. Mm -hmm. You get a nice thick, dense. Mm. All right. <laughs> it's like a cooking show. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to see. So we could kind of just leave them on the surface, pat them down. But I'm looking at these seeds, and I'm thinking we want some soil over the top. So on with the gloves. Probably the label, the 
the seed packet will tell us how deep we should plant them, but I'm guessing, I'm thinking we could. Just a sprinkling of potting mix over the top. You'll get a better germination rate if you've got good contact between the potting mix and the seeds. They germinate. Now you could use a watering can with a very soft kind of rose on it and, and water the leaves in. Um, you could use a hose with a very soft spray on that and water them in. Or you, could, you could use this, I'll probably, I'll probably go to the watering can option. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. So, you want to use... <laughs> so, so initially when you first water, you want, you want to wet the whole, the whole mix. So you want to do this until there's water coming out the bottom, which I won't. Um, so watering can probably better at this stage, but we'll do that outside. And then this you would put outside or inside in a spot that's going to get sun on it. So you want it, you know, some direct sunlight, particularly when they start to grow. You want to keep the soil moist, it's like growing seeds that we did in the first couple of weeks. You want to keep the soil moist but not wet. You don't want to let it dry out. If it dries out, they, they could fade off. So in, you know, I reckon in a week, we'll see a lot of action, lots of seeds popping up. So we get them every day water? Yeah, so you want to, yeah. So this time of year, this will be great actually. We'll put these up in the propagation area and it's meant to rain pretty much for a week solid. Well, not solid, like it's going to rain all week. So we're, they should be, they'll be fine. They'll get plenty of moisture. But yeah, if it's you if it's hot, rain? yeah, you can yeah. Well, I'm, if it's heavy rain, you can leave yeah, the whole week out from rain. Well, if it's if it's really heavy rain, yeah, it can it can kind of disrupt the seeds and dislodge <laughs> them, and yeah, you might end up all over the place. So if it's really pouring, but you probably okay. The best the best thing to do is keep them out of the rain, I guess, and just control the watering. Yeah. If you are going to stick them, I'm going to stick them out there, and we'll see what happens. There's a question from Alison. Is the way to prevent salmonella? Is the way to prevent salmonella? Whoa, I have no idea. Salmonella. So salmonella is another bacteria that I think it comes from manure. So I guess to prevent salmonella, you probably wouldn't use manure maybe in your mix. Um, I don't know. Do you know? Do you know, do you know how? Well, sal salmonella, salmonella is from salmonella food. food. Got to eat it. Got to eat it. To get anything. Get anything. Get anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not from it's plants. Not from it's plants. It's, 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 it's you've got to ingest it. Ingest it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Steve. Steve. Yeah. It's Leslie it's from Leslie this morning. This morning. Hi, Leslie. How you going? Look. Look. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a lovely, got a lovely, lovely north, facing, north facing north balcony, balcony, and I've had, I've great, had fun great fun using Mr. Fogging Gills packs that packs you, get, that you get from Bunnings. Bunnings. Yeah. You know, if you only you want, want to do, only want to do a tiny little tiny bit, little of, bit something, of something, yeah. he's, 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 he's a great, a great, great. And, and you do all and this, you do and you get a little kick for it. Yeah, okay. And yeah, and, so and, and I've grown I've tomatoes, grown tomatoes and, all and all sorts of, of and, and, and it's and just it's great just fun. Great fun. And you don't have to, buy, have to buy a, a whole a you whole know kilo, kilo pack, pack of, of things. things. Do you know anything about his stuff? Because I think it works think really, works well. really well. well. You know, it's that, you know, firm. it's that firm. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just try different ones. I'm yeah, well, well, they really, well, they work, really very work very well. well. And, 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 and just for a bit of fun on your, your window, window ledge. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about, growing food on... Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it's really good. So what we do with the microgreens is keep them moist, not wet. Same old story with growing seeds that we did in the first couple of weeks. And... Um, 
And what you do is you you let them grow. So we good? Yeah. So um whereas the sprouts you kind of is is it you eat the whole thing. These ones they're growing in soil, so they'll grow as little plants, and you eat them when they've got a couple of what we call true leaves. So most plants the seed is here when they start to grow, they send a root out, they push this bit goes up and you get a couple of leaves to start with. They're called the seed leaves. So they're the call it seed leaves will do. And then they'll send up another shoot and then you get a couple more leaves, maybe and leaves. So when you've got this is the point that you eat them. So you've got two, well, this is one option for eating them. So when you've got two, what they call true leaves. So you get these two first leaves that come out. They're the seed leaves. And then they'll send out a couple more leaves. They're the true leaves. So you can then come along with a pair of scissors and chop them. And you go chop, 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 chop. And you've got a beautiful bowl of salad, which is the best salad you'll ever eat. <laughs> I promise. And it'll keep growing. Well, this is the this is the question. So if you cut them down here, yeah. they won't regrow. Because there's nothing here that's going to reshoot. So one another option is you got your true leaves, seed leaves here, you got your true leaves. This is should be able to draw plants from the Tech Architect. And then you so maybe if you leave it a little bit longer. How does, how does this work? How could that? Say, uh, uh, so if you're using like salad greens, like a lettuce, for example, or a rocket or something, they don't actually grow like that. So you get the true leaves, and then what you'll find is the leaves kind of sorry, seed leaves, the leaves will kind of grow often, they'll grow up like this, and then the part of the plant where the leaves are growing out of the main growing bud is actually down here. This is just confusing things too much. But basically, you'll have a bit of the plant where the new leaves come out of. That's the, the growing part. If you can cut them and leave that little bit, then you'll get new, you'll just get a continual supply of new leaves. So if you can, so a lot of your lettuces, the growing point is down here, and the leaves grow up here. So you can just keep keep going. Does that make sense? Whereas some of your plants, the growing point is up here, and as soon as you cut them, then that's the end of them. Some of them might, you'll get two new two shoots coming out like that. So that's. Life still goes on. Life oh, still goes on. Doesn't it? Leaves, uh, yeah, so I mean, you could eat them if you want to. There's the but seed if leaves. If you want it to regrow, so the seed leaves are a different thing, but there's a point on every plant where you get new growth coming out of it. Oh, okay. so some plants, like some of your lettuces, that point is actually quite low on the plant. Mm. You can harvest the seeds above, uh, the seeds, harvest the leaves above that growing yeah. point, and it will just keep growing. Is it the same as every plant? Yeah, so different plants. If you, as soon as you cut your little plant below that point mm. where the, the leaves it, are being produced, fine. that's it. So you'll get it. But the beautiful, that's why I love this, uh, these salad mixes. I mean, I love other things as well, but the salad mix is good because for that reason, a lot of these plants grow, you can harvest them. As long as you don't harvest them too low, they'll stay alive and they'll reshoot again. And then you just come out five days later and then harvest them again, and then reshoot and then harvest them and then reshoot. So you get a constant supply of salad out of the little salad mixes. So it's lots of fun and it's really delicious and it's crispy and crunchy and yummy. Another thing that you can do um, to help help the nutrients and help the help the plants grow really well is add some sort of like seaweed extract or maybe some worm juice to your water. So you would just put like maybe a cat paw in a container like this, just and you put that in. For, you know, it just might give them a bit of a boost. Can you show them what that is? So it's just seaweed extract. So. Um, yeah, there's various brands of it. Or you could go with one that's got a little, some fish extract in there as well. Um, but I would want to Yeah, if you want. <laughs> yeah, if you're a big, yeah. 
And I don't know, it stinks. And it might make your salad taste pretty awful. That's the only other thing. Yeah. So maybe you do that once and then just go do some stuff with it. Microgreens. So microgreens and sprouts. Um, you know, fun. Fun to be had and yeah, lots of productivity and not much space. So anyone have any questions about it? On, on Zoom, anyone on Zoom have any questions? We have 10. Uh, I have a question. Have a question. Uh, please. What do we do with the, do the, the root the system that's left, left, left uh, in, question, the tray, so, in the tray? Yeah, so Compost it? Lost, What's that? Yeah. Yeah, so once you've harvested, you know, exhausted these plants and they're not really producing anymore, um, you've got some, some soil here with root systems in it. You could kind of turn it upside down, I guess. You could, it depends how, how long you've been, um, how thick it is with roots. You could just bung that in your compost and start again. That's really mm -hmm. cool. that's, yeah, that's something you could do. Or you could, yeah, that's what I do. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little bit different to a garden bed, which talks about you know the roots systems in your garden bed. You you want to leave them there because the microorganisms break them down and they have the soil and all that stuff. This is a slightly different system in that it's only that much potting mm -hmm. mix. And it's not really we're not really building healthy soil in this context. We're just purely producing greens in a Mm -hmm. that okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. If, so if you did that out in the garden, just sitting in my trays that I've got, yeah. would the snail just be gravitating to it? Possibly, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you, because this is potentially outside, you could do this inside as long as it gets some direct sun. If it's outside, um, and it's a really good point, actually. It's one of the real benefits of growing in inside. Like sprouts, apart from mold and things, they don't get you don't have to deal with pests and diseases, which we will be talking about next week. If you'd like to join us, it's going to be really it's one of my love pests. Um, <laughs> if, if this is outside, you could the snails could come and get it, the possums could come and get it. Everything it's it's up for grabs. Okay, so. Maybe come back next week and we'll talk about how we can manage that. But this is definitely a solution. These, are, again, they're quite cheap, but really, really good little experiment. But yeah, it's a good point. So Zoomers, we've got five minutes. At the end of uh, at the end of the Zoom session, we like to go around and ask you guys if you can just share with us, um, with your Zoom mates and, and everyone who's here, one thing that you remember. Because what it does, it just helps us all to kind of it's um, remember things that have happened. So if you if you could do that for us, that would be really um, helpful. This way, everyone. Yeah, 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 you're all speaking. <laughs> Francis is ready to go. We can see you. <laughs> we can see you. <laughs> so just uh, if you could just turn your unmute yourself and just share one thing, and um, um, Natalia will call out your name. Thank you. Uh, first, first of all, thank you for coming and attending. So I'll just start with Diane, following by Francis. Um, I I learned that. I there's a difference There's between a difference sprouts, between and, sprouts microgreens. and microgreens. And one you grow and in a jar, you grow in a jar and, and one you grow, one in, you a grow in a container. container. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Francis followed by Aldina. Aldrina, sorry. Um, 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 you get better germination rate right, if you have right, if you contact have between, between the soil, soil and the seeds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aldrina, following yeah. by Diane. Yeah. 
Uh, I learned about the potting mix to look out for the red tick of approval. That was very useful to know. Thank you. Diane, following by Helen. Of me? Of me? Thanks. Good to hear about microphone greens. Thank you. Helen, followed by Leslie. Helen. Oh, that was Helen? No, that was Diane. Oh, okay. It was Helen. It was Helen. Yeah. Oh, there was her. Thank you. <laughs> Leslie, following by Tat. Leslie, you just have to unmute yourself. Les yeah. Sorry. Can you unmute yourself? I didn't know I you didn't could spray the seed fruit. I'm going to have to try that. To try that. <laughs> Be really I fun. love beetroot. <laughs> Julian reckons so too. <laughs> Great, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Tab, but right. uh, and I'm I, I am new. I'm new today. today. Yeah, and yeah. it took me about 15, about 15 minutes to right. get into the class. Yes. Anyway, yes. I. Anyway, I, I, I I've learned something, I've learned but uh, something. I, also I also grow some, grow uh, some uh, at, home. at home, like just cutting, like just cutting, cutting, cutting the top of the top of and put it on the soil. And I actually, and I actually enjoy, enjoy uh, picking up a lot of fresh leaves, leaves and eating it in a salad. salad. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, very yeah. easy, very yeah. easy. But I have a hard yeah, question hard later, later on, maybe on, next week. Maybe next week. I try to grow. Uh, I haven't got much haven't luck. Got much luck. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ted, and that. welcome. Thank you. And Thank you. you want to say something? No, no, Tirani. No, Tirani. I guess I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you yeah. need to yeah. yeah. grow some yeah. Okay. Yeah. Salad. Yeah. Salad. Yeah. The layer of salt. Relative. Sorry, we're, we're not quite getting it. It's breaking up. I'm getting every third word. Okay, I think okay. So. I think I'm with my audio. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, better now. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. The amount of the amount salt of salt for this. It's oh, very. It's very. very <laughs> we'll just nod. Yes. Sorry, we didn't get that. Uh, come back next maybe, maybe type it out, Tarani, and we can read it. Okay. Uh, just, okay. while, just while you're doing that, I'm going to put in a, a big plug because um, Steve really does know a lot about pests. He loves pests, like lady bugs and chickens, I seem to recall. But um, when we did pest management in the last course, anyway, I learned so much. So definitely, definitely come along to pest management next week. Very cool. Some great photographs. Some sort of like hot, you know, horror story, natural horror story photographs <laughs> of things eating other things. Scary world out there. So Tirani just um, typed in, I'm surprised that the salad mix needs so little soil. Thank you, Tirani. That's yes. really good. A good point too. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, give it a crack. It's um it's actually, despite what some people say, it's quite nice eating sprouts. It's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's, it's At fun. least it's healthy for you. Yeah. yeah. It's very healthy. So, but yeah, check out. There's, there's a whole, like all of this stuff, there's more and more layers and there's lots of information. And there's, you know, but um, yeah, enjoy. And hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Our last, last episode. Thank you for your Thanks, Dave. Bye. 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 Bye